Hi there. In a previous video, which I will link right up there, I had a little art haul from Cult Pens, which is a company based in the UK. Now they're not just pens. They, although they have a fabulous selection of fountain pens and inks and things like that, but they also have an art section. And I've ordered from them before and always been pretty happy with them. I think I got my Derwin Ink Tents pencils from them at a really good price. You never know, so it's often good to check with cult pens because you never know when you're going to come across a sale or just a really good price. And sorry, I just hit my stand. So one of the things I did get was this package of aqua color crayons. Now, if you're familiar with the Neo Color 2 crayons, you'll they're much the same. Uh, they're a little bit bigger than the Neo Colors, which I'll show in a, a little bit. Um, some people, when I've seen the reviews, said they weren't as um, soft and not as water soluble, but I've done a couple of tests and I'm pretty happy with them so far. I haven't really used them in an art project. I only just got them yesterday. So, and I've been working on other things. But here I'm going to do a little bit of a swatch out for you. And you'll see these are the colors that you get. So that's 48 in a set. The set, you can also get a 24 set. Unfortunately, these aren't available as open stock. So if you lose one or you break one, uh, you're kind of out of luck. You'll have to get an equivalent in the Karen Dash Neil Color 2s. And I do have some broken ones, as it so happens. I have four of them. I guess in transit, they got a bit mucked about with, and so there's four of them that don't, that are broken, like almost right in the middle. But I, I let cult pens know, and they've refunded me for about four of them. So that was, that was nice. And I just realized now that the, the tin's kind of broken too. Oh well, I think I can fix that. So anyways, let's get started. Enough with the complaints. Let's get started swatching. So, oops. Up first is white. And I put... Um, some black marker down just so that you can see that a little bit better. And this is the zinc yellow. I'll go over these with um, the water at the end. Just give you an idea of what they're like as just crayons. You don't have to use water on them, but that's one of their main purposes. So this is the Lemon Cat. It says it has it in various languages and they're all made in Germany. And here we have a Lemon, one of the other broken ones. And then Canary Yellow. And Orange Yellow. And this is Orange. I'll probably just tape the crayons that are broken so it makes it a little bit easier for holding. Uh, this is dark orange. It has a nice variety of yellows and oranges. Because sometimes you'd only get like a little bit warmer and a cool yellow. But I like having this, this range of yellows. Okay, so that was Vermilion. This is Pale Geranium Lake. 
and you'll really see the color come out when I add water. This is rose carmine. And this is dark carmine. And where you have dark carmine, carmine and regular carmine, you have a light carmine. And here we have Rose Matter Lake. It's a nice shade of pink. Uh, dark Flesh, otherwise known as just pink. Not every, I don't know many people who wear that color. Um, then there's Light Flesh. Again, it's more of a kind of a dusty rose, kind of an antique pink. And this is magenta, which magenta I would normally say is more of a hot pink, especially if you're thinking of um, CMYK magenta. Uh, this is blue violet. Then we have deep cobalt. And light cobalt. And sky blue. Just double checking while I'm picking these up that I haven't put them in the wrong order. And this is light blue. And this is true blue. And then Prussian blue. I love Prussian blues. And this is peacock blue. I did just use this for the commission that I was working on and it was really, really nice to use. Aquamarine. Or was it this one? I think it was this one that I used, the night green, because I was doing an evergreen, a snowy evergreen. And there's a Viridian, normally not my favorite of the greens. My favorite of the greens is usually a sap green. And that's a nice version, not as yellow as some sap greens, more like an olive. And this is moss green, which I would think would be, I would think that would be sap green and this would be the moss green, but I do have them down correctly. And here's apple green and light green, which is quite bright green. And then moving on to a little bit darker, there's olive green. And these are really my sort of greens, these ones here. And this is cedar green. And then we have dark sepia, which is almost like a black, like a purpley black. And then Van Dyke Brown. I like that it has a really dark brown because some sets don't bother. Uh, this is raw umber. It's really sort of golden raw umber. And this is brown ochre. And this is gold ochre. And this is just plain old ochre. Although they have it as sienna in other languages. Um, burnt ochre. This is more like a burnt 
sienna, then Venetian red, and Pompeian red. That's nice. I can see myself using these ones for doing brick, giving my painting some texture. That was Indian red. The light gray is very light. Hopefully you can see that. This is a silver gray. And I always kind of want to... Silver makes me think of Christmas carols because I heard somebody singing, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow while I was out. And this is the final one. This is black. So I'll give you a little bit more of a close-up of the colors straight from the crayon. I think overall it's a really good selection of color. At least for me, it has the ones that I sometimes miss in other sets. So now let's get some water on them. The white kind of washes away on the black, so it doesn't really give you that great of an idea. Here's the lemon yellow. Let's zoom in a bit more. This is a cad yellow. And this is the lemon. This is canary yellow. Just trying to leave still some of the, the crayon. And this is the orange yellow. Now I'm moving on to the orange proper. That's a really nice true orange there. This is the dark orange. And this is vermilion. Now I can work the water and the brush over that so that you don't see as much of the texture of the crayon. There's still a hint of it though. This is where the Caron Dash Neo Color 2's excel at. If you don't want that texture, you can get rid of it. It also has to do with the paper. This is kind of a, a cheap um, watercolor paper. Oops, it's a little too much water there. And here's the dark carmine, which is more magenta than that. And light carmine. And rose matter. At the end, I'll do a couple of comparisons with um, equivalent colors from Neo Color 2's. This dark flesh kind of just disappears a little bit, but I like it. And light flesh really quite disappears to almost, it's almost nothing. That's where it almost as pale as me. And here is blue 
violet. And that magenta is still, I still think that's closer to a magenta or that. Uh, here's going with the blues, it's deep cobalt. And light cobalt. Sky blue. It's more like a periwinkle blue to me. These seem more like a sky blue. And true blue. And Prussian blue, it's usually my favorite kind of blue. And then some more of the unique ones, this peacock blue. It's like a teal, aquamarine or turquoise is next. Again, I'm so heavy with the water. And night green. And verdian. So here's a sap green. It's more like a chromium green. beside it is the moss green which again like I said before I would see that more as a sap green and apple green is very apple-y light green does it calm down its intensity somewhat still almost like a neon green Olive green is more like a, a brown or like a green umber. Cedar green, that's a nicer, more natural green. And dark sepia is a brown despite it looking a little bit purplish. And Van Dyke Brown. And going to Raw Umber. And Brown Ochre. Gold ochre. It's very gold. Regular old ochre. Or perhaps raw sienna. And burnt ochre. That's a really nice burnt ochre sienna. Uh, Venetian red. That's a nice red, maybe a little too reddish for me for doing brick. The Pompeii red is a little on the pinkish side. Here's the Indian red. It's very red. And grays. Grays are my favorite too. And like the light flesh, this one really kind of disappears. And there's silver gray. And medium gray, which I like. That'd be nice for using for 
and just always thinking like has portraits for like a sidewalk or a walkway uh, keeping the texture and that's the black so how does it stack up to the neo colors let's see so this is neo color 2's van dyke brown and this is the lira one and you can see that's hard to tell that way um the barrel of this is a little bit wider than the neo color but the neo color is longer than the lira so it depends on how you work do you want something a wee bit not heftier but gives you that sort of weight or do you want something more fine like the neo color so let's test maybe ones that well let's test the brown it's not that exciting but you can see here so we have the van dyke now these won't be exactly the same colors. I don't know. There's no color information on the Liras. Uh, and there's none on the Neo Color 2, but I think I do have it in a chart. But I'm not gonna look that up just yet. And this is Already you can see how this is slightly textured um, cold pressed paper. It's not 100% cotton. I'll show you. It's the um, Canton Montville and it is cold pressed 140 pound, but it is not 100% um, cotton. But you can see how the white. Uh, comes through the lira a bit more even when you're going over it whereas the neo color goes on a little bit more smoothly it's a little bit softer than the lira so let's see with a bit of water we already know what the lira one's going to look like see if I can dissolve the pigment and not have the texture showing. It's pretty good. And I it does it does have a lot of pigment. I'm only picking up from what little was there. Now the new color. And I do like it, there's less work with the Neo color to get it to dissolve so that you don't see any of the texture of the crayon itself. And that's a lot of pigment in that small, small little bit. So it's really your preference. Um, the Lyras are a lot uh, less money than the Caran d'Ache for an equal set. Um, but the Caran d'Ache do come open stock and they're about two something each. And that way you can pick just the colors you want. You could start with a small set like I did and then just add to it as you're you know, changing styles or changing subject matters, you may need different colors and you may not need all of these colors. So you could be saving yourself a wee bit of money and, and just not having stuff sitting there that you're not gonna use. I do plan on using these a lot more. Um, I may layer them as I do with some of my cheaper oil pastels. 
those go on the background. Um, I don't feel so bad about using them in the background and covering a wide area. Um, I feel less easy <laughs> using my Sennelier to cover in a whole background. Um, but that's how they work well together. Um, start with the cheaper and then work up at least for the oil pastels. Um, I did use both in that tree today, but it's not really a good example because I also put um, watercolor on top and, and um, colored pencil. But you can see some of the remnants of the crayon and I did use both the Lyra and um, the Neo color as well. So just putting that aside. But I'm pretty pleased with these so far. I'll have to start working with them a little bit more so maybe I'll have an update in a little, little while and maybe do more of a comparison between them and these neo colors and that's it for now i will put at the bottom in the description a link to cult pens um i bought them myself i'm not affiliated with them um but they're really good source especially if you're checking prices you know have a look at their site just in case because you never know it might be slightly cheaper at cult pens than it is at say jackson's or some of your other uh, art suppliers. Okay, so that's it for now. Um, thanks very much. If you like these videos, how about subscribing so that you don't miss a swatch out, which is like part two of an art haul. And also you can follow me on Instagram to see what I'm producing with these art supplies. I'm at Eileen Riley Arts and I'll be just at the end. Okay, thank you.